hell. <laughs> 1984 Chevrolet K30. Uh, crew cab four wheel drive, 350 V8, turbo 400 transmission, corporate 14 bolt rear end. Um, this truck has always had a jerk and a clunk when you throw it in reverse. Doesn't do it in drive one or two, but it does do it in reverse. I initially thought it was the rear end um, because I've checked the U joints and everything else besides the rear end, and it seemed like there was a lot of play in that rear end. Uh, I had the rear end rebuilt, and clunk is still there. It's, a, it's less, but the clunk is still there, so I did a little research. And the Turbo 400 has the highest line pressure in reverse. So they have a shift cushion kit or reverse and I'm gonna be installing that as well as a shift kit so right along with me as we uh, we do this here so I've already taken this pan down I've taken everything apart um, just because it's a complete mess when you do it so I drilled a hole right there and I've let it uh, drain out for it's been approximately a week because there's a whole ton of fluid in here. Take out all your bolts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Whatever. Take out all the bolts except for one in the front. Or one uh, in the back. And then when you you're gonna need to put your hand on the uh, pan. <laughs> So when you have that one bolt at the back or at the front, wherever, and you've got your drain pan lined up underneath here, and I would recommend a large drain pan, then you want to drop it down very slowly and let that drain out as much as possible. And then when that drains out, then get your other bolt out. very slowly because the pan will still have fluid in it very slowly pull it down have lots of uh, rags around and then drop it down onto your drain pan like so and then you've got your filter so take that bolt out and then this is a deep pan so you will have a spacer like that one right there and then pull your tube down and put that in there and then you've got your pickup tube. And because it's a deep pan, and watch the uh, O-ring that's up in there. And then you've got your pickup. Uh, this is a deep pan, like I just said, and it will have uh, a longer pickup. So the pickup if it's not a deep pan, it will probably be about that long. Um, you also have, I'm not sure if the new filter comes with it or not, but you have that rubber insert so that with the softening kit, we are taking this off. But you can't get to that bolt. Where's my rag? You can't get to that bolt with these tubes here. And then you can't get to that bolt with the valve body on there. So these tubes just pull out, straight out, and they pull straight out this way on the valve body itself. 
and they might be a little bit tight. You might have to take a screwdriver and pry those down gently. It will not come out this way. I suppose if you had the valve body unbolted and then, so, and then we have this little arm that we unbolt. Unbolt. <laughs> Got that arm and make sure you note the orientation. And the reason why that was tight is because it's the only one they got in there holding the valve body on. Okay, so take that off first. And it orients itself in that hole behind it. Okay. Put that in your pan. Maybe take a cell phone picture of all this, just in case. And then you've got bolts that you're taking out all around the valve body. So when you finally get your last bolt out, then gently pry down on these tubes to pull them out of there and let your valve body drop down. And put that into the pan. Here's a view of that's going to be a complete freaking mess. And so this gasket is, or that plate or whatever that is, I think it's a plate, is held in by your, um, your kick down. Okay, you can see, because that plate is still in here, you've got check balls. You've got one right there, you've got one right there, you've got one right there, you have one right there, right there, and right there. So you can see your check balls. So when you take these two screws out, bolts, then your plate is going to come down and maybe uh, take a cell phone picture of this so you can orient yourself because if you're not putting a shift kit in, then you need to uh, put those balls back in the proper places. So once this plate is down, then clean everything up with a clean rag and you will be able to, so the balls will come down with that plate. So when you go to put it back together, then you want to stick a little grease up in each one of those holes that have the check balls, like a lithium grease or even a Vaseline, just so those balls will stay up in the, uh, the transmission. So while I'm down here, Let's take that plate off. And I think I said it before, but I've got some information. Why is that smaller? Hold, please. I've got some information on the Turbo 400 after we install shift uh, softener <laughs> maybe I can edit this out of the video corner for me. I didn't know that when I bought the house. So that's just a little plus to living here, which hopefully I'll be moving soon. Maybe the beginning of uh, the summer. And you've unplugged your, your kick down. I believe that is a plate. I have never 
Uh, shift kit. I have changed. I have changed the filter and fluid, obviously, but never done a shift kit. Okay, this is going to be more mess. So let me move the drain pan. For God's sakes, and that better not splash on my cell phone. Okay, so you the balls will stay in there. And then transfer that over to your pan gently. And you can do a little cleanup. I'm gonna do that after I shut this phone off. And then we will take down, if I can find the socket. We'll take down the, I don't remember what they call this. This is going to have fluid in it too. Let's move you over here a little bit. Or up here. And then so I can move my drip pan, which you'll probably need it's more than a drip pan. That's where he lives. That's already loose. That's already loose. So let's unscrew that. I have not had this down yet. Let's unscrew that. This is a messy freaking job. This is probably the messiest of them all. I guess I would classify that as the messiest. I don't know what else would be messier. So I had the, the rear end rebuilt, the corporate 14 bolt. And uh, the local shop the uh, brand name local shop wanted to charge me like $3,300 to rebuild that rear end, which is freaking outlandish. So I wasn't going to do that. So my next venture was to be, um, was going to be either pull something out of the wrecking yard that was in le better shape, less mileage, or attempt to rebuild it myself so I did a lot of YouTubing on that corporate 14 bolt and of all the, the uh, rear ends well not all the rear ends but of all the one ton like Dana 60 corporate 14 bolt Dana 70 yada yada the corporate 14 bolt is the easiest of the transmissions to rebuild. Um, obviously, you need some specialty tools. But on uh, Facebook Marketplace, I found a guy that's like a mile away from here that does this stuff, does that stuff out of his garage. So, like I said, they wanted $3,300. So, the guy that's a mile away from me. The Yukon Master Rebuild Kit is, I believe it's about between five and $600 with gears. And he charges, what was it, $600? He charged me $600 to install it. So that was a grand total of about $1,200. So I obviously did that because that's a freaking bargain. 
and that has some fluid in it. Not a ton though. Set that aside. And then we have the C clip. Oh, that's what's got the fluid in it. So let me uh, let that drain a bit and then I will show you what's on the top side. So you've got that spring, you've got a C-clip on the bottom side and that's what we will be uh, taking apart next. I'm going to shut this off. Okay, so here's your assembly. This is your quote-unquote piston, I believe. So I already took the seal out of here. So there's just a rubber seal. And then when you flip this over, you've got that shaft sticks up through the center with a C-clip. So I took the 1132 uh, open end wrench and you can press on the two edges of the C-clip and pop that off there. You've got the original spring. You've got the original shaft. <laughs> shaft with the original spring on it. Um, there is a washer. that sits on top, like so. <clears throat> so, and then you've got the piston. So this is, this is a metal, this is like a, a cylinder ring that goes around here. But, so when you get the kit, it comes with two rubber seals. So you've got the one that goes on there, and then when you pull this out, that has a piston ring, metal piston ring, that goes down into the bore. Uh, so, and they supply you with, the, the kit does not supply you with these uh, gaskets, the metal gasket and any of these other ones. So I'm going to reuse the uh, metal rings just because I think that's a better way to do things. So stick that down in there. Okay, so the instructions say to take the new shaft and take the original washer and put the new spring on there. Let me stick that on there as well. It doesn't show this, but I'm going to stick it on there anyways. So I'm not going to stick that on there because uh, it really doesn't fit down very well on top of that. So we're going to take our new spring. And then the instructions say to stick five supplied washers. One, two, three, four, five. And the original washer. and put this into the assembly like so okay so then i just i took the uh, piston out of there and just put the shaft with the five washers and the spring on there 
just to make things a little bit easier so you don't have to try and get the uh, piston up inside there. So stick the shaft up in there. And this is supposed to be flush with the case. So it's spring loaded. So once you put the shaft up in there, it's spring loaded. So it needs to be flush with the case flush with the case because this is kind of at an angle so I need to grind that down a bit Okay, so the next step is to take your new shaft and put uh, one washer on there. Let's see, because the original washer is a little bit smaller than the ones supplied. So we're going to use that one and we're going to get our new spring put a washer on there and then we will take our piston and we've put our new seal around the edge and then we have maybe wipe that out and we put our ring back on or the new seal Put that down in there. Like so and then we'll take our shaft assembly with our one washer and our new spring. So it says because that spring is super stiff. So it says to put the washers on top, but I believe that I'm going to Let's see how that looks. Let's 
So that should be about perfect with one washer on top there because two is not going to cut it. Where'd my C-clip go? I could almost fit two on there. I think that if I take that washer off, and I guess that is the thick one. So I take that back. We're going to stick that back in there with the original washer, we'll take one washer, we we'll take two washers, and we'll uh, see how that looks, because that spring doesn't, doesn't compress <coughs> at all. So we're going to have to use one washer. And spring we've got this green spring which it didn't have before and uh, what else okay so this whole assembly you have to put your uh, new seal on there where the hell did the seal go oh. Only goes one way. I had to read through this a few times, but they supply this little uh, round, uh, I guess you would say it looks like a jet, which they call an orifice. So the instructions say when you flip it over, it says if there, it's, this is, if trans has orifice here, which is where that arrow is pointing, drill to size. So it says up here, their drill orifice is 86th, I believe that's hundredths, I'm not sure, to 94. Right there. So I have, which that equates to uh, number 44, can't read that, number 44 drill bit, which is that. So if you go down here, so I have taken this uh, star driver, which is the same size as the cup part of the orifice quote unquote so that driver fits right into the center <clears throat> so when you go down here to look at sorry to look at the situation <laughs> So they are talking about, there's a hole right there. There's no orifice in that hole, but there is a hole. So I'm presuming they want you to install the supplied orifice into that hole, which I'm going to 
take a screwdriver, or I'm going to take that uh, star driver with the orifice on the end of it, and I will gently tap that into place. Which is uh, kind of difficult to get that square. Okay, so I've got an uh, 1164 drill bit, which happens to fit right down inside there. <coughs> this makes me really nervous because. This hole should have been drilled before it was like Take a little bit of compressed air and blow that in there too. All right, let's see if you can take a look see in there. So the orifice is installed uh, and the hole is drilled and flushed. And All of that assembly, the light, and we will stick that up in there, and then put your hole right here. Okay, so we've got six check balls. We've got one right there. I'm gonna do this slowly. We've got one right there. Move down the channel and we've got one right there. And then move straight down and we have one right there. And that funky S, a funky S. And then move straight across, and we have one right there. And then, so we've got one there, 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 and there. So if you want to take a screenshot, have at her. So I have found it easier to stick the gasket up against the case. The uh, metal plate up there and then you screw in your, your uh, kick down. So I'm cleaning up the uh, oil pan bolts. And uh, so the wire wheel is one of my best friends. I use that thing all the time. And then I just picked up these, uh, they're called engineers pliers. So they're rounded and have serrated teeth going the opposite direction as normal. So they're actually used to 
take stripped heads, the screws, like a Phillips head screw that's got a stripped head on it, you can grasp them with the rounded portion. But you can also grasp uh, threads, like a so, and clean the uh, heads up on it. Freshly painted original deep pan. Um, I put a piece of fucking. I had to weld a drain plug into it. Quick rundown of facts and figures. You have a shallow pan and you have a deep pan. The deep pan is approximately an inch and a half deeper. Um, that actually looks the same, but it's only because it's a cast aluminum. You'll have a longer pickup tube and the sure sign is that you have this little spacer for your filter and the longer bolt. Your gasket. Your shape. It takes Dexon 3 tranny fluid. If you install the shift kit like I'm going to do, or a shift softener, then throw four quarts into the transmission before you start it up, and then um, top it off as needed, probably in the five or six range total. If the transmission is dry, if you have a rebuilt transmission, it'll take 12 quarts with the shallow pan and 14 quarts with the deep pan. Um, oops. You surefire sign that you have a turbo 400 is if you have a switch, it's an electric kick down. So if you have that orange wire and that switch on the other side, which is attached to your linkage on your accelerator. There's your neutral safety switch, which I've already replaced. You can just pry that off and unplug it off of your steering column. If that goes bad, it will either start with it in gear or it won't start at all. So that orange wire is your electric kick down. Uh, that wire, that white wire, plugs into the other side. There's your switch. There's your vacuum modulator. If you have a vacuum line coming off of your uh, carburetor or manifold, then you have a vacuum modulator. Uh, you can buy adjustable ones that you stick an Allen wrench down into the port where the vacuum line uh, goes in. So if that goes bad, you could possibly have white smoke or soft shifts. <laughs> and I think that that is the rundown on the Turbo 400.